Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Esri GeoDev webinar series. We started this series as a way to continue engaging in developer-related topics and discussions in between Dev Summits. We are looking forward to our next upcoming Dev Summit conference, which will take place March 8th through 11th, 2022. Moving forward in continuation of our GeoDev webinar series, we will continue to have new topics, advanced features, and additional functionality to share with you, so be sure to stay connected with us through our GeoDev webinar series page or any of our social media accounts at Esri GeoDev. We would love to have conversations like these taking place throughout the year so that when we do meet at one of these Dev Summit conferences, it will be as though we never stopped. We hope you get as much or more out of this webinar than you anticipated. Now we would like to introduce you to our webinar, ArcGIS API for Python, Geospatial Deep Learning with ArcGIS.Learn. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. We've taken a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop in the upper right corner. You're listening in using your computer's speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select Use Telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. I would now like to hand it over to our presenters. Hello everyone, my name is Karthik Dutt and I work as a senior data scientist in SRE R&D Center in India. Today, to, uh, together with Sandeep Kumar, who is a senior product engineer, we'll walk through some of the geospatial AI capabilities of ArcGIS API for Python. We'll cover several workflows, including application of deep learning and machine learning algorithms on GIS datasets, such as imagery, tabular, text, and 3D data. I'll start the session first and talk briefly about the available deep learning models in ArcGIS Learn module. Then we'll go through some, uh, go through a few demos and uh, show some of the recent developments and features that are added in imagery and uh, tabular models. Then I'll hand it over to Sandeep. We'll talk about some of the use cases with uh, 3D data and text, uh, text data. He'll also be going through some of our uh, ready to use models. Let's start by talking about deep learning in general. Why is deep learning important? There are massive amounts of data that is being generated in today's world. There are lots of new satellites and huge amount of drones that are capturing high resolution and high temporal data. The traditional approach of manually extracting certain features from a couple of images doesn't scale up anymore. Deep learning allows us to teach the machines to extract the required information for us and hence deep learning. The de facto solution for automation that we have uh, seen historically is artificial intelligence and machine learning. Let's see how we can use AI and ML for automation purposes. Before that, let's briefly talk about what is deep learning. We have heard a lot about artificial and artificial intelligence and machine learning, but deep learning is relatively new uh, to a lot of our users. Let's see how each of these terms fit together. Machine learning refers to approaches or algorithms that learns from existing data and use that for predicting the outcome of new or unseen data. Deep learning is just one type of machine learning that is inspired by the human brain. In the context of ArcGIS, machine learning is being used for a while in various tools. For example, in clustering, image segmentation, predictive analysis. These are all classic examples of machine learning. We have been using these tools for a while now. Now let's look at how uh, deep learning has evolved and how long it has been around. Computer vision is now almost as good, if not better than human vision, at least in most of the imagery tasks. The chart on the right shows how the error rate of image recognition 
on the images on ImageNet has been going down year on year. Since the time deep learning has taken over, we have seen a constant decrease in the error rate. And we now see that the computers have gone, gotten significantly better at recognizing the images compared to humans. Having talked about what deep learning is, now let's see how deep learning integrates with ArcGIS. There are more than 30 different models available catering for specific GIS tasks. They range from object detection to image classification to image enhancements, change detection and much more. There are also deep learning models that work on non-imagery data like tabular, time series data and unstructured text data. Additionally, ArcGIS also enables an integration into third-party machine learning frameworks and also deep learning frameworks. Now let's look at some of these models and some of the applications where these models are applied. This is object classification. Here we can identify the buildings that are damaged. Moving on to object detection, which is a very common task. We have a collection of images and if you want to detect the pools, buildings, cars, ships, you can, you can use object detection models. In fact, you can train your own model on your own data and on any given geography. Next, pixel classification. It is used to classify images into themes so that we get a thematic map. Here we have a used pixel classification model on Sentinel image to classify the geography with different land cover themes. Next up is edge detection. As the name suggests, it is used to detect edges. Typical use case uh, is detecting field boundaries or detecting parcels for urban planning and other scenarios. Then we have road extraction. It's a massively requested uh, typically for urban planning, transportation planning and much more. You can train your own uh, road extraction models based on your own imagery and your geography. <clears throat> then we have change detection, which is used if we, uh, which is used if we have a stack of images, and when we want to detect changes across different images. As a slide, the window here, you can see the number of new structures that have come up. With the next one, which is the image to image translation models, we have simulated an optical imagery with radar data. <clears throat> Next is image captioning. Click on any location and the model provides a self-constructed sentence which describes the uh, image. Lastly, image enhancements. This one looks straight out of the movies. This is what the image looked like previously, a 30 centimeters resolution image. And as I swipe over the image, we can see a higher resolution of the image that has been derived from the original image. As you can see, there are tons of models that are made available within ArcGIS. In fact, there are more models for point cloud data, for 3D data, for tabular data and text. Now let's have a look at some of the new models that have been recently added and the applications where they can be used. We start with MM detection. MM detection is an open source object detection toolbox based on PyTorch and all the new state-of-the-art object detection models are continuously updated to this repository. MM detection was recently integrated into ArcGIS uh, Learn module. In this demo, we are going to use Dynamic RCNN, which is one of the many object detection models available in ArcGIS Learn uh, via MM detection to detect muzzle forms uh, using satellite imagery. Muzzles are uh, aquatic animals with hard shells. They look like this and is consumed by a lot of people around the world as food. Muzzles grow in freshwater rivers or lakes near their openings to saline water of sea or ocean. The farmers collect muzzle seeds from nearby rocky shores during low tides and attach them to the rows, ropes in their uh, rafts. While sustainable uh, farming can help the ecosystem, its exploitation can degrade the environment quality and biodiversity. Therefore, it is uh, important to keep a check on the growth of uh, muzzle farms in a region and their expansion in fragile areas. 
Satellite imagery and deep learning can help in monitoring muzzle farms, uh, muzzle farming in a very short time. Let's see how this can be done. We start by importing MM detection from, uh, from RGS Learn module. Then we prepare our data by providing the path where we have our training data and the batch size to the prepare data function. The batch size that we pass depend on the memory of the graphic card uh, that we have. We then visualize our data by calling the show batch method. As mentioned earlier, um, MM detection supports various state of the art models and dynamic RCNN is one among them. We create our model uh, object by passing our prepared data and the, uh, and the model which we want to use. In this case, it's dynamic RCNN. Then we fit our model. But before we do that, uh, we have to find an optimal learning rate. Learning rate is one of the most important hyperparameters in uh, model training. ArcGIS API for Python provides a learning rate finder that automatically chooses the uh, optimal learning rate for us. Now having found the optimal learning rate, we fit our model for several epochs. We can see that uh, the losses on training and validation data is going down, which means that the model is learning to detect the muzzle farms more and more accurately. Once we fit our model for sufficient number of epochs, that is until we see that the model losses are no longer decreasing, we can visualize our results by calling uh, the method show results. We can also see how well our model uh, is performing and then save our model onto the disk. The save model can then be used uh, to detect the muzzle forms uh, on new and unseen data. We can use the detect object using deep learning tool available in ArcGIS Pro for this purpose. And it produces a feature layer which looks like this. All these boxes which are marked in yellow are the muzzle farms detected by the model. Uh, well, that was object detection. We have also recently integrated MM segmentation, which is similar to MM detection, but for segmentation tasks. We'll now look at an application which automates the extraction of glacial terminus. With a change in global climate, Glaciers all over the world are experiencing an increasing mass loss, resulting in uh, changing calving fronts. This calving front uh, delineation is important for monitoring the rate of glacial mass loss. Currently, most calving front delineation is done manually, result in excessive uh, time consumption and underutilization of satellite imagery. For the purpose of this demo, we have used data provided in the CALFIN repository. The training uh, data which includes more than uh, 1600 Greenlandic uh, glaciers and more than 200 Antarctic glaciers. Uh, these are the images which are obtained from Landsat and Sentinel-1 uh, satellites. The workflow of training in MM segmentation model is very similar to that, uh, to what we saw with uh, MM detection. And uh, well, in fact, it's the same across any of the deep learning model available in our GS Learn module. We first prepare our data, visualize it, create a model object. Uh, in this case, uh, we use HRNet for segmentation task, find an optimal learning rate and uh, fit the model until we don't see any improvement in accuracy. Then we visualize the results and save the model so that it can be used later for uh, inference on unseen data. Looking at the mean IOU and the precision recall and the F1 scores, we can see that the model performs very well in segmenting the glaciers. In our next demo, uh, we'll move on from imagery to tabular data and see how ArcGIS supports uh, applying machine learning on tabular data. As mentioned previously, ArcGIS provides an interface to third-party libraries like Scikit-Learn to apply any supervised or unsupervised learning machine learning models on tabular data using ML model class. Apart from this, we have recently added AutoML into ArcGIS. In this demo, we are now going to have a closer look at AutoML uh, and with a very interesting application of that. 
Let's now see how AutoML can be used to create an optimal machine learning algorithm to predict the risk of dengue disease spread across Kenya. Training a machine learning model involves data pre-processing, uh, feature engineering, model training, hyperparameter tuning, and model evaluation. This is an iterative process and at the end of multiple iterations of the cycle, we end up with an optimum model. However, this is just for one model. There are multiple models out there, each with its own cycle. Hence, arriving at a model which best fits our data is not an easy task. It takes a lot of time, effort and expertise in this domain to find one. This is where AutoML comes in. It automates this entire workflow and finds the best algorithm and the best set of hyperparameters that best fit our data. The implementation of AutoML in ArcGIS Learn is built upon an open source implementation called MLJAR and all the supervised learning al algorithms offered by scikit-learn library along with other popular models like LightGBM uh, and XGBoost are currently supported. We start our demo now by using this feature class which is stored in my WebGIS. This feature class sh uh, shows different locations across Kenya and some of these uh, are marked in red. These locations which are marked in red are the locations where dengue disease has already occurred and those are our ground truths. We will use this ground truth data to create a classification model that will predict the risk of dengue disease spread across different locations in the country. To help us in the task of classification, we have various factors which have an impact on the spread of disease. Uh, some of uh, these factors are altitude, uh, distance of locations from water bodies, population density at each location, etc. We have all of these factors saved in the form of rasters. Now that we have these rasters, we proceed and uh, prepare our data so that it can be passed on for model training. This is done by calling the prepare tabular data method. Once the data is prepared, we create an auto ML object uh, by passing this prepare data and then we call the fit method. On calling this uh, method, auto ML evaluates multiple algorithms each with its own set of hyperparameters and arrives at the best model. The best performing model along with all the other models are then saved onto the disk. Apart from the models, uh, apart from the methods to see how well the model is performing and to see the sample results, there's also a very useful report uh, that gets generated. The generated report shows the different algorithms that were tried by AutoML, how well each of those uh, performed on our dataset and the time it took to train them. Here we can see that the ensemble model uh, created by combining the results of best performing models was deemed to work best with our data. By clicking on this link, we can see that the ensemble was created by combining these three algorithms. We can see that the feature importance of each of the models that were trained. In this case, feature 1, which is altitude in our case, uh, uh, had the most impact on the light GBM model. Uh, now uh, that we have an optimum model identified by AutoML, we will use this model to get the predictions of uh, dengue disease spread across all the other locations in Kenya. This is done by calling the predict function and the predicted raster is generated as the output of this. The regions that are shown in this predicted rasters in red are the, uh, are the regions that are at the highest risk of dengue disease spread. Uh, we just saw how AutoML can be used in order to obtain the most optimum and well-trained model without having to understand each of the models which otherwise would have been necessary. We saw how we can train deep learning and machine learning models on imagery and on tabular data respectively. But one of the common concerns which the users have is that most of these models are black boxes. They would like to understand why a particular model produced a particular result. They want the model decision process to be more, made more transparent. We have recently added uh, features to address this concern. So now uh, let's look at how we can interpret some of these results that we get from the imagery and tabular data models. Deep learning models are considered black boxes as until now it was hard to understand and interpret the results. However, there have been advancements of late which are very helpful in addressing these problems. 
Now we are going to discuss how we can interpret the results of the feature classifier model in RGS Learn module. We will also see how the same can be achieved on tabular data using the ML model. Let's start with uh, the feature classifier. We have now added support to get the explanations for each predictions obtained by the feature classifier. The explanations can be viewed as a heat map overlaid on top of the original image and the heat map shows the areas within the image which influences the model the most in arriving at the decision which the model eventually arrives at. For example, in this picture, showing the predictions from a damage classification model, we can see that the heat map is centered around the regions uh, with maximum damage, thus confirming that these regions are indeed what influences the model in classifying this property as damage. This feature will help uh, build the trust of the users in the decisions taken by the model. Let us uh, look at another example. I have loaded another model that can classify each image as having a swimming pool or a solar panel and obtain the predictions on a new image. To do this, I call the predict method on the image and set the parameters visualize and gradcam as true. We can now see that along with the predictions, we also get to see the heat map that suggests that the model is exactly looking at the regions of the image that has pools in order to classify that this image has a pool. Now let us move on to tabular data. In order to make the models in ML model more explainable, we have integrated SHAP into ArcGIS Learn. SHAP is a game theoretic approach to explain the output of any machine learning model. To demonstrate this new feature, I will now load a trained machine learning model that can predict the efficiency of solar panels based on the attributes like length of the day, weather, temperature, etc. We will use the predict method to get the predictions on a sample row. This method now takes in two new parameters which are explain and explain index. The parameter explain is a boolean and setting this parameter allows the users to, uh, to get the uh, explanations or the predictions. The parameter explain index is the index of the row of the data frame for which the users would like to get the explanation for. On running the predict function, apart from the predictions, we also get a plot which tells us the mean value of the prediction of the entire data set, which is denoted as the base value in the plot is 0.12 and the prediction for this specific observation is minus 0.01. The plot also tells us that this parameter representing the solar radiation has had the greatest influence on the model to get the predictions of this specific record. This is represented by the length of the block for this parameter. All the parameters in blue are making the model to move away towards the left from the base predictions and all the parameters in red, in this case there are none, are making the model move towards the right from the base prediction. We can thus obtain the prediction explanation for any individual record in which we are interested. It is now also possible to visualize the global feature importance for all the models which work with tabular data and not just the tree based ones. This can be done by calling the feature importance method on the model object and the resulting plot shows the parameters that most influence the model. With, with the addition of uh, these features, we hope that the hesitancy in adaption of machine learning due to the lack of transparency while dealing with black box models uh, is now addressed. Okay, uh, so those were some of the demos which I had uh, for today. Now I'll hand it over to Sandeep who will talk about our 3D models, text models and he'll also speak about uh, some of the pre-trained uh, uh, ready-to-use models available when RGS.NAM. Over to you Sandeep. Thank you Karthik. Now I would like to talk about how to get started with deep learning in RGS. There are two options to get started with deep learning in ArcGIS. We recommend you to start with option one, which is by using pre-trained models. Pre-trained models are as good as GP tools and are ready to be deployed. But in a lot of cases, we want to go beyond pre-trained models. We also get tools in ArcGIS that cover end-to-end -end deep learning. This is the complete workflow you just saw in action and you will also see it in a few upcoming demos. It involves labeling, data preparation, model training, and finally inferencing. Pre-trained models 
give us a jump start. It eliminates, eliminates the requirement for imagery, labeling the imagery, data preparation, and massive compute requirements that come with training a model. We can directly jump into, inf jump into inferencing and just get the output which we want in a ready to use GIS format. Now let me show you few pre-trained models and their applications. Here are some of the pre-trained models available on Living Atlas. First, we have Building Footprint Extraction USA. This works with high resolution satellite imagery. Next, Building Footprint Extraction Africa. Next, Road Extraction North America. Next, Swimming Pool Detection. Next, Car Detection. This model works with drone imagery. Next, Solar Panel Detection. This one also works with drone imagery. Next, Shipwreck Detection. This model works with bathymetric data. Next, we have Ship Detection and this model works with SAR data. These models were object detection models where we get features as output from the models. Next, we have these pixel classification models, which is, first is land cover classification using Sentinel-2 imagery. Next, we have land cover classification using Landsat-8 imagery. Next, we have human settlements classification using Landsat-8 imagery. Next, we have human settlements, Sentinel-2. These were imagery models. We also have some models such as this one. This works with point cloud data. This model can be used to extract power lines and associated utility poles from point cloud data. This is an image redaction model, blurring face and license plates. This is an object tracking model. This model can be used to detect and track objects from full motion videos, such as this truck and such as the shadow of aeroplane in this video. Now we have hosted all these models on Living Atlas for World and these pre trained models are ready to be downloaded and adopted by you in your workflows. Also, I would like to highlight that we have recently released these two new models on Living Atlas for World. One of the models is this mangrove classification model. Input to this model is Landsat 8 imagery and output is a classified raster denoting mangrove cover. Second, we have a well pad detection model. This model expects a Sentinel-2 imagery as input and output here will be location of well pads in form of a feature class. Now we have seen what and now let's see why it is so important. For example, if you have a large imagery and you want to create information layers out of it, you can use pre-trained models to directly create a GIS from it. Here I have loaded imagery for Grenada. Grenada receives 78 inches of rainfall annually. Due to that, some of the buildings and other infrastructure is constantly at risk of damage due to flooding. This is how the flood susceptibility looks like. We will now use pre-trained model to extract features such as buildings and roads. The first tool which I will use here is detect objects using deep learning. I can find it here under raster tools, deep learning, detect objects using deep learning. I'll point it to my imagery and I have all these models available on Living Atlas. For this run, I'll use just uh, the building footprint extraction model. So I'll pick this and in the interest of time, I already ran this tool. So I'll just zoom in to the city of St. George and you can see we had detected around 50,000 buildings. And out of that, these 1500 buildings fall in flood prone areas. We also detected roads and we combined buildings with these roads and LiDAR data and we created a digital twin out of it, which looks like this. We have also tried to detect 
power lines for the same area using the pre-trained model and now this digital twin can be used for urban planning, disaster management and prevention and many other use cases. You can also use these pre-trained models and start adopting them in your workflows. Now we have an interesting demo just about point cloud data. This is the city of Ballarat, Victoria in Australia. And we have added point cloud data for the whole city to our scene. Our objective here is to find areas where vegetation has encroached upon power lines. To make use of this, we use the pre-trained models in ArcGIS Pro to classify this LiDAR data to different classes, which look like this. We can see the buildings in red color. We can see ground in brown color. And we can also see these power lines in yellow color. And finally, vegetation in green color. Next, we filtered our classes of interest, which is vegetation and power line in this case. Next, we analyzed the proximity of points from these two different classes and find these areas where vegetation has encroached upon power lines. This map can now be used to plan a maintenance drive and provide for a rough estimate of effort required to remove these encroachments. So this was about pre-trained models. There are several scenarios though where you need to train your own models specific to your geography, specific to your imagery properties, or you are just looking for a different asset for which we don't provide a pre-trained model. You can continue fine tuning pre-trained model or train a model from scratch. We got you all covered with the required tools in ArcGIS. So apart from imagery and point cloud data, we also can use deep learning to derive actionable insights from data sets containing unstructured text. Now let me show you a few examples of that. First, I'd like to show you the text models available in Python API for ArcGIS. The first model which we have is an entity recognizer model, text classifier, sequence to sequence model. We also have some models which work out of the box. We call them inference only models. We have six different models in this category, namely fill mask. Then we have question answering, text generator, summarizer, translator, zero shot classifier. Now let's see a few of these models in action. The first one here is named entity recognizer or NER model. This model is used to parse unstructured text and extract named entities under some predefined categories such as persons, organizations, etc. Now we will use this NER model to parse unstructured fire incident reports from Cheshire County and create a structured data set to finally plot that on a web map. We have obtained about 10k fire incident reports from Cheshire Fire Rescue Department portal. This is how sample of one report looks like. We have date, time and location of the incident. What started the fire and what all fire st stations participated in the rescue operation. This is all available in unstructured format here. Before we could apply NER model on this data, we need to train an NER model. To do that, we require to label a fraction of these reports. For that, we can use an open source tool, Docano. We start by loading these reports in the tool and we create these entity categories such as address, date and time, incident type, number of engines, response unit, title, and time spent at incident. Now we can start annotating our document with these labels. We'll try to cover as many as we can to have a good variety. Once we are done, we can export the label data to the JSON format. Once we have exported it to a JSON format, the next step is to import it using Python API for ArcGIS. The first step here is 
to point the prepared data function to the JSON we just exported. And once export, once we have imported our data here, the next step is to instantiate an entity recognizer model, and then the usual workflow: finding learning rate, fitting the model, and then once trained, we can extract entities from all the reports which are available here. As we can see, the reports are now available in a structured format, and it's pretty easy to use as compared to the unstructured format. Because we have the address entity here, we'll now use it to geocode it using the geocoding module in the Python API for ArcGIS. Once geocoded, we'll see that we have an X and Y attribute available with all the reports. Now we can use this attribute and plot it on a web map. So we so we just saw how we went how using the NER model, how we went from the unstructured reports which look like this to a web map of these structure, same reports in a structured format like this. So this was about the NER model. Next, I'd like to show you a text classification model. Text classification is an NLP technique where we assign a set of predefined tags or categories based on the text content. This is we have loaded this data from openaddresses.io and stripped the country uh, data from the addresses. We'll now use text classifier model from the Python API to identify missing countries from these incomplete addresses. The first step here is to load this training data using the Python API for ArcGIS, specifically the function which we will use here is the prepare text data uh, function and because we our data is in format of a csv file we'll point it to that csv file this csv file contains this information which is addresses on one side and their countries on the other side we'll now instantiate a text classifier model but we will not start from scratch we can use transfer learning here and to find how we can do it, we can just see what all backbones are supported here. And because my data set contains a variety of languages and I have seen that this backbone XLM Roberta base can work fine with that. I'll just use that backbone. Then the usual model training workflow, LR find, then fit the model and then I'll just see the results here. So my model has started understanding the training data. I'll apply this model on an unseen address which I got just got from internet. I've seen that it classifies this address to Spain, Spain country and now I will run this model on all the records available in the data set we were able to correctly map the addresses to their correct countries and finally geocode them and put them to a web map so we just saw the text classifier in action and we were able to map all these addresses to their correct countries next i like to show you a demo of sequence to sequence model this model can convert one sequence to another whether of the same length or a different length. In this demo, we will try to standardize or correct some non-standard and incorrect addresses which are all from United States. So the first step now here is again to load this training data to Python API for ArcGIS and specifically we'll be using the prepare text uh, data method here. To start with that, we'll import the method, uh, the function and the model and we'll point the function to the CSV file containing this information. As we can see, the CSV file contains one column on the left side of non-standardized addresses and standardized addresses on another column on the right side. 
we'll again start from we'll use transfer learning so we'll start from a backbone which I think T5 base will be sufficient for this one and then the usual model training workflow such as LR find model fit once we have trained we can see that the model is able to understand what we are trying to do here and will apply this model to unseen addresses for example the first here the first address it was able to convert the second avenue node to second AVEN which is a correct as well as standardized format to represent that next it has also converted the full text of state Connecticut to the abbreviation CT which is a standardized way to write so this is how we can use sequence to sequence model to convert from one format or one sequence to another sequence whether it's of same length or not now I'll, the next thing I'd like to show you is text translation this is an inference only model so there's no training data here so we'll just use the text translator model available in the Python API to convert my story map which is originally in English to Spanish the first step here is to log into my GIS using the Python API for ArcGIS and I can do it like this and then once I'm logged in I'll connect to my GIS and fetch the story map I want to convert this story I just got it using the ID then I don't want to overwrite my original map so I just cloned it and I'll be editing that next step is to instantiate a text translator model source language is English target language is Spanish next to help uh, with the translation I created these utility functions which will help me convert the text attributes associated with the story map to proper uh, converted text next I'll get the data for the story map which is these attributes text title summary and map it with the utility functions I just created now I have these attributes but in Spanish I'll update the cloned item which I just cloned from the original story map and this is how my cloned item looks like the description has already converted to Spanish now to just to have a comparison comparative view I'll use this swipe tool to compare my English story map with the Spanish story map so this is how we could use text translation model in the Python API for ArcGIS to convert from one language to another now to train your own models you can take two routes you can either use GUI tools or the Python API today we saw both of them in action the best part with these is they are completely interoperable and deliver identical results it all depends on your preference whether you want to use a GUI tool or a API script just to reiterate we saw the pre-trained models in action and this is the first option we recommend you to try and if you need to train your own models you can definitely take option 2 we got you covered by all the required tools in ArcGIS I also want to share with you one more thing which is about the installation of deep learning libraries to simplify the installation of dependencies of ArcGIS Learn we now have a deep learning libraries installer for ArcGIS Pro and Enterprise and there is a new Conda meta package that can be used by Anaconda users to get all the dependencies in place you don't need to install separate deep learning packages we got all it bundled for you now we are nearing the end of our presentation so I'd like to share with you a, key, a few key takeaways from our session today ArcGIS has powerful deep learning capabilities these powerful tools and APIs enable you to breeze through your workflows. These tools are accessible through a variety of clients. We support a range of tasks for image classification to object detection to change detection and more. The processing is massively scalable using enterprise. 
To complement our deep learning solutions, we have a powerful image management solution and over 1400 geoprocessing tools to perform downstream analysis on the results. Lastly, we are further democratizing AI and making deep learning accessible to the larger geospatial community by providing pre-trained deep learning models. And with this, let me hand it over to Amy, who will cover resources and field questions. Over to you, Amy. Thank you, Sandeep and Karthik. We're now going to begin answering the questions submitted during today's presentation. We've received quite a few, and we will try to get through as many as possible. But whatever we do not get to, we will address in the Esri Community blog post after this webinar. As a reminder, you can still submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. Our first question is, where are key roles or utilization of ArcGIS API in predictive maintenance as well as preventative maintenance? Can we use this software for emergency maintenance for utility sectors? If yes, how? Please elaborate. Uh, Amy, I can take up this question. So uh, yeah, there are two types uh, or it depends on the data which you have. Uh, for example, if you have uh, the data in tabular format, uh, then you can use our ML model class, uh, which provides options for you to uh, use any of the supervised learning or unsupervised learning uh, models from uh, sklearn, scikit-learn. So in case you have some data in your tabular format, uh, which where you have already classified certain uh, observations as uh, requires maintenance, then you can use uh, supervised learning approach for that. And you can use any of the supervised learning models uh, from uh, the ML model class. In case you do not have any training data for this, so then you can use any of the unsupervised learning models, uh, which is again available in uh, sklearn for which we have an interface using ML model class. So this is, these are the two options which you can use in case you have tabular data. In case you have uh, the data as images and you want to look at the images and you want to uh, look at the texture and possibly want to uh, classify them as needing, uh, as something which needs maintenance, uh, then of course it would need uh, training data for that. So in case you have the data for training, uh, then you can use any of, uh, you can use the classify objects using deep learning tool uh, in order to do this uh, classification on the images. Yeah, over to you, Amy. Okay, great, thanks, Karthik. Uh, what kind of license do we need to run these scripts? So we do not need any additional license to use the Python API for ArcGIS. It comes bundled with ArcGIS Pro Python environment also, if you want to use it directly. Additionally, you can install it in any Anaconda environment. For more information about installation, uh, I have a link where you can directly go and check that uh, and set up, get set up. You might have seen some GP tools in action today. For that, uh, you need image analyst license for imagery tools and 3D analyst uh, license for the tools that work with point cloud data. Thank you. Okay. Our next question is, is it possible to use deep learning to detect roof shapes, flat roofs versus pinched roofs, pitched roofs, excuse me? Definitely we can do it. Um, we need to prepare a training data set like that. It depends whether we are using imagery or point cloud. Uh, we have similar but not exactly same workflows are documented. I can share a link uh, later. And if you are working with imagery data set, you just need the imagery and the labeled groups. That's it. And we can train a model for that. Okay, next question. Uh, is there any chance you have an example of the process of creating the training data? Yeah, I can take that up. Uh, so uh, yes, there are uh, tools available in ArcGIS uh, which you can use in order to export your data. So again, it depends on what kind of uh, data you want to export. And uh, there are the, the data which you would need for detecting objects is, is different from the data you would need for, let's say, image segmentation. So all of these workflows are covered in the tool uh, with uh, 
that's called as uh, export data using uh, export data tool so you can use that particular tool and uh, in order to know more about the process and on how you can do this there are several samples that uh, uh, go through this workflow which is available in our uh, developer site so you can go through those samples the link to that developer site is available in the resources page uh, yeah you can visit that link and get to know how you can export the data thanks okay great our next question is there a model for detecting utility poles uh, yes, uh, if you are working with Point Cloud Data, we have a pre-trained model available on Living Atlas, uh, and it detects um, the transmission lines as well as the utility poles. Uh, if you are working with imagery, you can train your own model, or if you are working with Point Cloud, you can just use this model, and even you can fine-tune it to improve its performance on your data set. Thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, which version of API for Python was used for the models in the demo? Uh, yeah, I can take that up. Uh, so we used ArcGIS uh, Python version 1.9.1. .1. So that has some of the new features that we addressed or we just really discussed today, like MM detection, MM segmentation, model explainability, so all of these all of these features which we discussed today will be available in uh, 1.9.1 okay um next question is it possible to use now arcgis api for python uh 1.9.1 graphic cards with ampere ampere architecture to train models or do we need to wait for arc pro 2.9 release uh I think uh, we'll have to wait until uh, 2.9 release. Sandeep, uh, do you have anything to add on that? Uh, we, we are, for If we are looking for using the GP tools in ArcGIS Pro or uh, on any other platform, we need to wait for 2.9. And uh, if, we are, if you are an Anaconda user, yes, you can install ArcGIS Learn Meta package, which is available. Again, these instructions are available on the python uh, api for rcs developers website and we will also provide a link to those resources after the meet thank you okay our next question um how do you use the footprint model on any image outside the united states okay uh, i can take this question up so by footprint, I, I'm assuming that uh, this question is regarding uh, building footprints. So uh, this model, which we trained, was specifically trained on data from United States, but we tried it on uh, different areas in Europe and other areas. So we found that it uh, works even in those areas. Specifically, uh, we have a different model for Africa if you are looking to detect building footprints there. Thank you. Okay. Um, do you have any pre-trained models for recognizing addresses or lot numbers in sitemaps and converting those into points attributed with the text? Um. So I'm not sure at this point of time. Uh, I'll have to get back on that uh, question. We'll get back on the question. Okay. And then we have a final question. Uh, can I use my tra pre-trained uh, annotation training done outside of ArcGIS Pro files in ArcGIS Pro? I can take that question up. So by training done outside ArcGIS Pro, uh, you mean you have a pre trained model already available and you want to deploy it in RGS Pro? Um, yes, you can uh, use uh, models which are trained outside RGS Pro environment. You can bring them in. There's a framework, and I'll be looking into that framework and sharing that link. But it is um, the it is available as the raster inference functions repo. And I'll try to find the exact link and share it with you. Thank you. 
All right. Well, thank you, Sandeep, and thank you, Karthik, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar, ArcGIS API for Python, Geospatial Deep Learning with ArcGIS.Learn. If you have any questions about this webinar, we encourage you to post them in the Esri Community User Forums, as there may be users who share your same question. Once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation, and we would appreciate if you would complete that and provide your feedback. We will be providing a recording of this presentation, which will be available within seven to 10 business days on the GeoDev webinar landing page where you registered. On behalf of Esri and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.